next one is David Coburn, the EU coordinator from CFTD. Uh, no one, ladies and gentlemen, I think wants to aid corruption or criminality, but many people fear corrupt, criminal or socialist governments here in Europe as well as outside the EU who may now or in the future steal their hard earned wealth. <clears throat> Not everyone is crook or corrupt or has inherited lots of money. Some people work hard to gain their wealth and would like to keep it and pass it on to their children. Uh, look what happened in, Gre <clears throat> in Greece recently where they, there were tremendous restrictions on people's bank accounts um, and that was to shore up a rotten euro, euro and a corrupt system of government uh, both in Greece and in the European Union. Um, and remembering the European Union hasn't had its books dealt with for 20 years. Some people have not forgotten... Please, please what, a question. Please well, I'm question. getting to the question, sir. Some people have not forgotten what happened during World War II when assets were seized. Not everyone trusts the EU, not everyone trusts government, and with reason and experience. How do we... Now, the question, sir, very clearly. How do we balance rest, restricting tax evasion and corruption while allowing people to protect their hard-earned assets from rapacious national and international corrupt, incompetent, ideological governments. There's just been a revolution in the United States where President Trump has been elected because people did not trust the government. So this is also taking place throughout Europe. There are worries and concerns. I want to see people make sure that they keep their money at the same time as stopping corruption and fraud. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, President Trump. And well, on Trump and uh, Brexit, that's not actually the subject of discussion today. We're focusing on uh, more detailed points and factual matters. Uh, Professor Pala. I'm, I'm happy to respond. <coughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I'm happy, I'm happy to respond to it. Uh, um, I think there are legitimate criticism of various governments and even of the EU and or other country. The question that to my mind is, is important here is whether uh, some people, just because they are wealthy, are able to escape the problem of those governments, whereas the rest, 95% of the population, are not, okay? So the problem with offshore is not about the governments. You know, that has to be dealt separately by, I think, the democratic process, when I hope it will be. The question is, are you advocating that those who are powerful and wealthy will be able somehow to avoid problems and leave it to the rest? And if you're not advocating that, then the question that you're asking is not relevant to today. Well, okay. I'm asking about the, 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 I'm no. asking about the, um, the changing the law as well. No. Let answer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Short addition. Um, the... Uh, the comments you made actually are very reminiscent of the, the way that wealth managers think about their jobs. I, I promised in my slides that I could answer questions about how wealth managers think about what they do. Um, and I, I think it is actually useful to consider how the world looks to a wealth manager. Um, and one of the, the things that many wealth managers seem to believe is that they are protecting wealth creators from rapacious and illegitimate governments. This is actually what you will find if you go through the, the educational texts for the wealth management training program. Um, this is, I mentioned this in my book because I think it's, it's important. If you as, as policymakers and lawmakers wish to interact with these intermediaries, you need to understand how they think. So they talk often of clients who are not just worried about the legitimacy of having their hard-earned money taxed, um, but they're worried about things like inflation. So I, I interviewed a fellow in Argentina who said, you know, I have to get my clients' money out of this country because we have 30% inflation a year and, and the government literally seizes my clients' hard currency every chance they get. Plus, if my clients file honest tax returns showing the money they have in the country, anybody can walk down with the equivalent of about 100 US dollars and bribe someone at the tax authority, get my name, address, the names of my dependent family members, and kidnap one of us or extort us. There's a safety issue here. So, in their view, they are doing the right thing. It's not just 
that they think about it as how can we skirt the edges of the law, but they believe passionately that they are protecting people who are contributors to society and who are endangered. So think about how you would talk back to people like that. They don't really respond well to being laughed at or scorned. How do you engage with them? Thank you very much for the ENF.